prompting in three levels. Bit of a lightning talk. Okay. Um, when I think about different skill levels, I often lean on this model called the Dreyfus model of skill development that talks about what it means to be a beginner versus, versus an advanced beginner and how you kind of move through different levels of capability of skill. It's a nice mental model. Um, what does it look like to be a beginner or an advanced beginner with prompting? Well, you know at the beginner level that a prompt can have multiple different components, an instruction, an instruction some set of context, some data perhaps that you're providing as input, and then some kind of output indicator which tells the model what kind of output you want, whether or not that output looks like a, say, a JSON uh, fragment or some sort of structured output that follows a pattern that you want. So this is kind of where most people start, right, as they begin to, say, work with chat or work with other large language models, of which there are many, many now out in the, the wild. Um, so this is what a beginner and advanced beginner looks like. And in um, specific, here are some examples of what they might be doing, right? So explain something to me, right? That's a zero shot prompt. Um, you know, explain what are the different forms of government widely found around the world, or what was it like to be in France during World War II? Those are zero shot prompts that a prototypical beginner, advanced beginner might be using with ChatGPT, right? Um, you can also, as a beginner, start to think about how you might use this tool to summarize text. It works very well with that. Um, you can look at a lot of traditional natural language processing type tasks like uh, sentiment analysis or entity extraction out of bodies of text. Um, but this is really what it looks like when you're in that kind of beginner to advanced beginner phases. You have an awareness of, of what these tools can do. You're not super advanced in your approach. And for the most part, to use the term of art, you're doing zero shot prompting. <clears throat> And I'll share these slides out as a PDF kind of after with everybody here. There's some links in here as well that kind of walk through that. So there's a presentation that I put together a while ago that shows zero shot prompting. Zero shot prompting is essentially where you're saying, okay, chat, I want you to do X and I get my result. And it's just a back and forth. It tends to not have more than that. That's zero shot prompting, which is different than what few shot prompting looks like where you begin to provide examples. This is where I think you begin to transition from being a beginner to more of an advanced beginner. And so few shot prompting, you get very good results with few shot prompting. If, for example, you give it these examples, which this slide is showing. So say you wanna do sentiment analysis. You've got three examples in this prompt here where we're saying, this is how we actually do sentiment analysis. And now you're providing what's called in-context learning to the model. So you give it an initial prompt at the top, you give it context, and then you're saying your data, right? To analyze, review this review, right? Give me the sentiment of that. This is moving from beginner to advanced beginner. You begin to be aware of the different techniques you can use and you start to explore them. Um, and those techniques are often referred to as sort of few shot prompting. The, the rabbit hole goes pretty deep though. And as you move from advanced beginner to more competent, that's when we really start to get into more deeper talk techniques like chain of thought. So chain of thought prompting actually elicits reasoning within the model. And there's a great paper on, on this that came out in early 2022, um, where we really start to get deeper into the examples and we're showing this in context, we're demonstrating to the model via in-context learning actually how to reason about these problem spaces. And so this is a little excerpt from the paper that's referenced here below of how we're actually saying, here's the standard prompt and here's what a chain of thought prompt looks like. Um, one way you can elicit the model to actually do some of this by itself is if you have an initial prompt that might be a few shot prompt and then you append at the end, let's think step by step. That actually encourages the model to break apart a problem and begin to think about it literally step by step. This is, is, is a, something I'm trying to also demonstrate here is <clears throat> the sort of art and science of prompting has moved and and there is a there's a lot to how each of us who wants to become very fluent and capable of this needs to be paying attention to the state of the art as it moves forward so early 2022 chain of thought prompting came out really really great paper on that many other papers have subsequently been published so as i think about it when you move from sort of being more competent to proficient and that's the language that comes with the strife skill model we begin to now dig into techniques that started to show up around early 2023, like tree of thought. 
So tree of thought prompting is where instead of having zero shot or few shot prompts, you're essentially doing chain of thought, but you're doing it in parallel, right? And so if you dig into this paper, it says, you know, you could have multiple models running and then coalesce and vote on the answers that multiple models gave you given chain of thought prompting. This is, is super interesting because you can actually simulate this in a single prompt um, by simulating experts and have them vote. And so that's kind of a fun technique we'll I'll talk about in a second, but that's chain of, or rather tree of thoughts prompting. So there's a link to the paper, really, really critical paper to go read and understand. And you can begin to simulate that, as I said, within the context of a single prompting uh, session with ChatGPT. And there was a gentleman um, out on GitHub, Dave, 1010, <laughs> um, who wrote a really nice uh, bit of logic about this and shared some code on how to do it. But the, the sort of way I think about this is you can actually fake tree of thoughts um, prompts by essentially putting simulants in, having it simulate experts in your prompt. And so you can say simulate a series of experts who are going to talk back and forth. This has actually remarkably good results, which we saw in the paper on tree of thoughts, which we can get close to within a single prompting session, say with ChatGPT, by just asking it to simulate personas and simulate experts. Super powerful technique. This is when you really begin to bridge between competent to proficient is when you, you start to think along these lines of like, what are these more advanced techniques I can bring into my tool belt for prompting? Okay. A proficient to expert. This is where people really start to think deeply about what's the process I'm applying, how I'm actually thinking about how the, the how behind the what of what I'm doing with prompts, right? And this is where people, I think, can move from this notion of proficient to, to seeking, uh, moving into more of an expert level with, with prompting. This is when I think we might consider people to be actually prompt engineers. Um, <clears throat> there's kind of six things I think about here. Um, What's the right technique for the job? Zero shot prompting, thinking about in context learning, are you using chain of thought, tree of trees? Are you paying attention to the papers and the academic studies that are coming out? Are you finding those new techniques? Because it's moving, continuously moving. Um, are you tinkering and iterating on your prompt? Are you building a library of tools, right? Do you have a prompt, you know, a bunch of prompts that are, say, checked into GitHub that you're continuously experimenting with? Um, are you using and leveraging different inputs and outputs, right? In a multimodal world, which now we're in with most of these models, you can take pictures, right? You can ask it to emit images, right? Um, <clears throat> you can have it emit markdown or graph viz notation or on and on and on. There's a lot of tef different techniques you can do there. Are you leveraging meta prompting where you're actually asking ChatGPT to write prompts for you? That's a pretty power move for me. Um, are you asking it to introspect on the prompt and its output to improve the prompt, right? That's another great move. Um, are you providing really rich context? Um, are you creating opportunities for this notion of divergent and convergent thinking, which is this tree of thought move? Um, are you thinking step-by-step step yourself, right? Are you, are you breaking down the problems that you're working on and imagining how can I apply this crazy alien intelligence to what I'm doing on my day-to-day? Um, I myself have a chat GPT window open, probably more than one, um, eight to 10 hours a day as I'm working. And I'm always asking myself, can I, how could I use this tool to help me think through this problem? And that, I think, beginning to kind of have that ethos and drive that forward is how you transition from proficient to expert. Um, it's also important to use the latest and greatest models. And so if you go out to this um, Hugging Space site, um, there's this thing called Chatbot Arena, which is a continuous set of assessments that are run across all the latest and greatest models to, to basically rank order them using sort of a chess ranking. This is super fascinating and fun to look at. Again, you can follow this link. Um, I'll send the, 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 the slides out later. Um, but always using the latest and greatest model, which probably not a big surprise here. Mainly that's GPT-4, um, although Mistral is moving up the ranks, Claude is moving up the ranks, and of course we this is not updated for uh, uh, Google's latest releases, um, which are undoubtedly going to be probably shocking in their capability. So always using latest graded models. This is a good source to know that. All right, high level, right? Just to summarize on expert, always start with the end in mind, communicates the model chat, what you wanna achieve, and then layer on more detail and context. 
think thoughtfully about how you break your problems up into smaller subparts so that you can have this model is going to solve this problem, this model is going to solve that problem. Begin to probably delve into the tools like Llama Index and Langchain to be able to do some custom coding on your side to help make uh, create tools for yourself. Um, think systematically as you go um, and then have this notion of constantly reassessing is what I'm doing the best possible uh, way to approach solving this problem. I did kind of tease this at the beginning. Um, God mode prompting in my mind is where you really begin to ask yourself in your day to day professional and personal life. When you first encounter a problem, how can I use AI to help me solve this problem. Um, I think the top of the mountain here for all of us is as we begin to get really capable with these tools, we see we can see a massive speed up in our ability to uh, perform as professionals to solve hard and important problems for ourselves in our personal lives. This could be anything like I'm going to plan a trip to Mexico and instead of it taking me many, many, many hours, I can get a good plan together in an hour. This can be I'm an independent author and I'm writing a book and I can jam a book out in a month, not a year. Um, there's a lot here um, that people are going to be able to get into in terms of going from being 20%, 30%, 50% more productive, which is the academic studies say, to 10 times more productive on different tasks. And that's where I think you get into this crazy term that I'm referring to is God mode prompting. Um, a few things on this, God mode prompting. Custom instructions are super powerful. If you use ChatGPT, make sure you've got really good custom instructions. I have a favorite that I'll, I'll share in a second. Um, do things like analyze your writing style so that chat will sound like you. Um, I can pretty much see uh, chat GPT or large language model generated text from space at this point. It's showing up everywhere. It's showing up all over the internet, all over social media, um, and it's not very good. And that's sad, and there's ways to fix that. Um, I encourage people to use all the different plugins that are available in the space, but be cautious in some ways about that, because um, your data privacy is something you want to be thinking about in terms of what context you provide to what plugins. Go look at perplexity.ai, one of the new search tools um, that uses large language models at the base. Perplexity is amazing. I use it every day. Obviously, if you're writing code on a regular basis, you use GitHub Copilot. That's probably a good thing. Um, stay up to date on latest and greatest tech. Um, go on to Twitter. I refuse to say X. Um, find the best experts that are out there. Follow them. Um, Contemplate whether or not you have a special need um, and it makes sense to do fine tuning. That's both cheap and easy now. Um, if you are in the business of um, operating computers, right, you're a programmer, software engineer, so forth, look at this project called Open Interpreter. It allows you to just basically chat with your computer, um, which is super powerful. Um, lastly, meta prompting is super powerful where you're flipping back and forth between one chat instance to help it have it write you a prompt, you're testing that prompt, you're sharing back and forth. Meta prompting, right? Getting into write as prompt itself, very, very powerful. Lastly, <clears throat> this is what one example of this God mode thing, and there's a link at the top of this to this chat GPT expert. So this is a series of custom instructions that in essence, the author of this has been continuously keeping up to date. And what it does is it automatically creates or or asks ChatGPT to take your basic prompt that you provide and then everything that we know about what's possible to do with regard to advanced prompt engineering it does it by itself so it takes your question and then it turns it into a high level amazingly good question it creates personas right simulants as we referred to those earlier it creates a plan um and this is revolutionary in terms of of the outputs and what you get out of these prompts and so go do this up go use this it's super powerful so there's a link to a bunch of different resources here um and then i kind of end with some comedy and some humor which is fundamentally folks um being really really good at prompt engineering and really good at working with the systems has to do with how well you can think systematically break down problems and communicate them to the model and this is a foundational skill everybody needs to get to. So I think everybody needs to get to a level of expert on this, if not what I cheekily refer to as God mode prompting. So that's the talk. Pretty caffeinated. I'll pause. I got a few minutes and then I got to bounce. But does anybody have any questions? <laughs>